All right. Welcome mm -hmm. back, everyone, to our webinars uh, hosted by CESA Systems. Uh, today's webinar is on how to digitalize your performance indicators. Uh, very pleased to have as a guest expert, Hector Villavicencio, uh, who's been also with our webinar before. Um, Hector is an expert in lean and industrial engineering, has uh, been a leader in uh, lean and transformation in a number of uh, large organizations. Uh, we uh, encourage you to review our webinars to listen uh, what he has to say about uh, change and transformation. Uh, today's topic, uh, again, it really revolves around the visual factory, digital transformation. Uh, my name is Jabril Bensadrin and I'm uh, hosting the webinar on behalf of CESA Systems. As you recall, uh, the goal of this webinar are, uh, the goals are to um, understand how to start collecting operators' performance data digitally, how to visualize that KPI data in real time on a dashboard, how to use that digital uh, KPI data and PTCAs for continuous improvement, how to customize the software specifically to your needs, uh, and how to communicate your KPIs within your organization. So uh, the way we're going to approach these uh, goals is through the following agenda. Uh, first, we're going to uh, make a statement regarding uh, the need to approach digitalization on really solid uh, grounds. We'll uh, then talk about why visual management is essential to reach good KPI management. Uh, so we'll start really with what is good visual management? What are the best practices in visual management? That'd be the third uh, item in the agenda. Once we have covered that, then we'll uh, see how to implement those best practices in the digital world. Uh, finally, we'll illustrate that with a demo of, uh, as a case in point, the CESA Hub Performance uh, Digital Visual Management Software. And um, finally, for those interested, you'll have a chance to uh, interact with us to see if you'd like to, uh, to, to test uh, through a proof of concept. So just a few words about CESA Systems. I know many of you probably already know us. Uh, the founder, Jean-Paul de Rayet, has uh, 30 years of experience equipping uh, thousands of companies with products and solutions that are entirely designed for uh, the factory of the future and uh, making factories and plants uh, more lean and efficient through a, a variety of product lines. Um, examples of customers are listed here in uh, uh, the bottom of the screen. Uh, and uh, the product lines include training games, uh, ergonomic office furniture, lean office furniture, ergonomic uh, workshop furniture, such as workbenches and so on, including uh, stainless steel and ESD, as well as uh, ergonom or logistics, uh, such as uh, floor racks and trolleys, ergonomic trolleys, Kanban systems, floor marking, signage, uh, and um, especially what we're interested in today, which is industry 4.0. And that includes uh, digital KPI management, as well as end on systems, uh, data collection, both uh, manual and automated, as you see some of them here, uh, as well as an MES. And um, visual management with uh, a variety of magnetic whiteboards, including a very popular rotating multi-sided whiteboards. Uh, there is a total is 2,500 products uh, used by 15,000 corporations, including most of the Fortune and many mid-market. Uh, the company has been uh, ISO certified this since for more than 20 years and uh, has been in business for 30 years. Uh, so just a quick recap, uh, what you see really as a, a quick diagram, uh, an existing process that might be 
uh, a bit, uh, let's say, inefficient and through a variety of lean related methods uh, becomes a lot more streamlined uh, thanks to reduced waste, optimized flows and uh, controlled uh, uh, vagaries that uh, can be deployed thanks to a variety of products brought by scissor systems. So without further ado, let's start with our initial statement. Uh, which is the importance of uh, before digitalizing, really making sure that the process of uh, KPI management itself is uh, properly set. And um, then you can start digitizing. Uh, so so we, we were really thinking uh, as digitalization as an opportunity to reduce waste if you do it right. And uh, I like this quote that I found, it's a publicly available quote from a continuous excellence uh, manager at Nestle. If you automate a complex, fragmented, poor quality process, the new solution will be difficult, impossible, expensive, and slow. Uh, imposing this new system on users is never popular. They tend to hate it. It costs a fortune. It overpromises and makes them follow activities they don't understand or like, I'm sure. Many of us can relate to this. Uh, so the easy thing to do is help users make your current process better before you automate it. Then, you know, don't automate waste. Automate simple, effective processes. So he says it's, it sounds easy, but over in 15 years, he's still helping people with this apparently easy task. Uh, so that, that's what we're, uh, that's the reason why we wanted really to start with this, you know, insisting. It sounds obvious, but it's not, uh, so I was wondering, uh, Hector, do you agree with this, uh, with this statement as uh, you have been being in many uh, situations where you, you need to reorganize uh, processes? Yes, uh, Jabril, 100% uh, agree with the, with the whole uh, concept that, uh, you know, di digital, digital visuals are powerful and are as powerful as the teams uh, are engaged uh, in the whole process of, uh, you know, uh, building the visuals and also uh, using the visuals. So uh, there is a huge opportunity out there to digitalize the visuals uh, with the understanding that the teams uh, need to get in, engaged in the preparation of the visuals. And they are also realizing the benefits uh, because now they don't have to spend time uh, uh, populating the visuals uh, manually. And that's actually something that they feel good about uh, when they know that uh, it used to take a long time to gather some of the data and now the digital um, visual is providing them the data without having to um, really worry about the, the sources, the, the, the data is there, they're le le leveraging the, the whole, uh, uh, you know, data, big data. So, you know, this, this is a powerful tool, uh, Jabril, that we have, uh, and, and we just have more opportunities to uh, use it uh, as we develop the, the whole, uh, uh, you know, industry 4.0. Eh? Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's a great point. It's it's actually a chance also to engage the team to reflect on their current uh, process and the current way that they're using data and what and also what um, kind of data they could gather. Uh, in addition to what is currently uh, gathered, uh, if they had the kind of a streamlined position uh, it's a system, uh, it's hard to do when it's uh, when it's on paper. To you know, each time you add one more piece of data, it just adds a lot of manual labor. But if you digitize the process, uh, you, you find opportunities. First of all, to streamline the process to make it. Uh, to make it a lot more um, logical and uh, to kind of revisit the way the data is collected and used. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, that's a great point. So, exactly. so in a sense, you know, it, it is an opportunity, right? Uh, yes. Engaging digitalization. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the next item, I mean, once we, I think we all agree that it's important, right, before uh, digitalizing to engage your teams, like uh, Hector said, and um, not just to try to reflect the current uh, processes in a digital manner, but to really reorganize potentially the process. Uh, think about it again. And 
And then, so why is it important to first think in terms of visual management uh, before we really talk about uh, digitalization? And uh, the reason is digitalization is going to produce uh, a set of visual KPI uh, and you know, screens and, and really the purpose is to support uh, the visual management with digital uh, solutions, at least as far as we are concerned, right? Uh, we want uh, to bring a solution that works for the operational teams, people who are involved in managing plants and processes. Uh, so there might be people uh, somewhere else in, you know, headquarters that might be interested and fine with with long lists of you know tables and uh, and, and data points, but uh, uh, us as people who are working to help uh, streamline operations to make uh, the teams uh, more efficient, uh, we we do care about uh, how easy it is to use, how quick it is to visualize, and and uh, and using this data as a communication tool uh, to increase performance. So. Uh, so that's the reason why we want to start with emphasizing the importance of good visual management uh, as a prerequisite to uh, good digitalization. Uh, and um, you, you have done some research uh, and found that uh, the power of visual is due to partly because it accelerates the reaction. The eye, the human eye and the brain actually sees in one tenth of a second uh, an image and interprets it. So literally in one tenth of a second, you can, you already make sense of the image that you see. Uh, and uh, it also enhances uh, memorization. Uh, when you see an image, you remember it 83% more than if you've looked at just a number or, or a text. Uh, it's also an emotional trigger. There's a scientific experiment showing that it's uh, even with brain imaging that it impacts the amygdala, which is, uh, you know, creates kind of a stress response, especially useful if you're uh, trying to get people to identify problems when they are still addressable and um, make sure that they, you know, immediately when there is an orange flag, it's, it's handled uh, quickly. And, uh, and also it really brings a collective vision, something that actually Hector was, uh, uh, had, had really pointed, so, you know, the image as a way to bring together people, right, around, it's like the two, double meaning of the vision, right? Uh, you create a common vision for where you want to go, uh, even using like a diagram and showing the direction, and at the same time, it's, uh, it's, it's visual, right, the vision in the sense of visual. Uh, so, um, so, so that's the one, you know, some of the main reasons. And then now the power of digital visual management is also has, is starting to be demonstrated uh, with really actual data. We've, we've actually observed the data on our own site since the systems is of course a user of uh, our own systems. Uh, and now we're sharing it with other companies like perhaps some of you. And uh, so we see the impact on uh, the time that is used to collect data. Uh, almost 0% time spent by supervisors and uh, managers and con you know, process engineers on data collection because um, compiling, because it comes directly from the system. It entered, like you see here, it's entered by a, an actual uh, operator or supervisor or colleague uh, in the system and then it's automatically accessible. So you could save uh, 20 to 30% of your time actually uh, used to do other things, more added value, right? You reduce the waste even just at, the process, at this stage of the process. Uh, it enables you to uh, accelerate the response to operational problems because the data travels immediately in the system uh, and it's shared right away. You don't have a delay between the moment where it's entered on a piece of paper and the moment where you really see the trend in, uh, on your end of the system. Uh, it reduces undetected issues. Uh, you can see right away performance deviations. They're calculated right away. There's, uh, you'll see in our demo, there are ways to show even with color codes immediately the data gaps and so on. 
uh, we have collected some uh, metrics in terms of cost reduction, uh, which uh, th those we found is 15%, but we actually even found uh, uh, case studies uh, that mention up to 30% cost reduction and 11% uh, improvement in overall OEE, uh, up to 20%. Uh, and so with all this, it pays, it, it pays itself back uh, within, within six months. And the reason is also that these are not expensive ERPs that take a long time to uh, implement. So they are, uh, they're really meant as an, as an additional tool that can be quickly, first of all, efficient, cost efficient to use and, and quickly uh, uh, operational. So we did speak with a company uh, that has a uh, that, that has a, a business case. They develop a business case for for the use of this system, and uh, they had they actually have three hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, defects per year in that department. So it sounds I mean it sounds a lot, but uh, for and, and it is for them. Um, the it is accounted in their ERP but it's not accounted for the lean uh, and continuous improvement managers. They don't know what it is and what, they, what the source is and what, is, what can be done about that. Uh, it's only entered on the ERP as a defective uh, part and the cost associated to it. So by having a tool such as this one that where it's easy to enter, uh, not only that there's a defect and uh, but also what it is, uh, enter it as a problem and follow it through through a PDCA, which comes with the software, uh, is a way for them to then collect the data directly from the operators and use it to feed Kaizen events and, you know, problem, uh, you know, Ishikawa diagram type of analysis and so on. Uh, so this is a kind of things that you can do once you have a software like this. Uh, an example, which is not uh, a, you know, coming from us, it's a publicly available example, uh, a microelectronics company, $10 billion, 46 employee, uh, thousand employees, uh, that is uh, kind of illustrating the, the, the reason for looking at digitalizing is um, that it, it helps, uh, it reduces the time that it takes for meeting hosts to uh, prepare the displays. Uh, they'd like to have the information updated automatically. Uh, which is the case of uh, this is a hub, which we'll show uh, later. Uh, then it also makes it easier to, to see. Uh, here, this is not at their location. This is another, uh, this is a client of CESA Systems. Uh, and um, we, 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 we call these uh, communication points. You know, uh, they can be more closed that it creates a kind of a space to meet. But as you see there, it combines both the traditional visual management and uh, digital screens that will be much easier for people to gather and to discuss and to, uh, and, and to see. Uh, and also there is a factor in terms of, you know, modern look, uh, which is good for both the customers when you, you have customers visiting, uh, but also, and especially for your own teams, right? It's part of culture development. So, um, the, there are some studies, I'll, I'll go very quickly, if you're interested, uh, happy to share some of the resources that we used. Uh, the University of uh, Manchester has published an article that recaps the functions of visual management and the benefits. And uh, the, so just a few of them, transparency, where you know, instead of having people held in people's minds, uh, information held in people's mind, you can share information with good visual management whether it is traditional or digital. Uh, it also creates a sense of ownership rather than coming from the management. It's really the team that feels that they kind of control their visual boards and they contribute to them as well. Uh, and uh, also it, 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 create, it transforms uh, any type of subjective judgments uh, or vagueness uh, into factual data that is as standardized as possible and can be measured really quickly. Uh, we'll, we'll see again that uh, in, a, in a few minutes. And um, finally, it, uh, because it brings people around a visual, uh, like Hector mentioned before, you know, the visuals really create, facilitate a sense of common vision. And so you break the boundaries between departments and different teams and make everyone uh, really 
feel and see how they are contributing to the overall strategy of the organization. So with that being said, um, how do we implement these, uh, these uh, visual management best practices? Um, this, this is our next, uh, next, next question. Uh, our uh, CISA Systems founder uh, likes to say, I'm not sure, I don't know if the, he's the author of this quote or not, but uh, you know, seeing together, knowing together, acting together. And, uh, and, and it's, what's great is really he kind of applies, you know, what he's uh, preaching uh, and uh, it makes a really a creative spirit of continuous improvement and, and, uh, and engagement of all team members because it's a genuine, uh, the, uh, the, the interest and the, you know, the best practice of having all the data as you see in this picture here, uh, organized, visible, uh, and we do this both um, on physical and, and, uh, and increasingly digitally as well, um, but not only for the purpose of you know, just monitoring and tracking, but really as a support uh, to, uh, for thinking, for team discussion, problem resolution, constructive problem, re problem resolution, uh, strategy development really makes a big difference. So you really kind of track, uh, for example, the SQCDP or, or E uh, in a way that makes sure that you are uh, stronger all together to serve your customers. And um, the, uh, the, so starts with uh, some very basic uh, expertise that uh, is a part of what the system brings, for example, uh, and, uh, and it has been, in, at least in the physical world, it has been uh, standardized with some, uh, ph some physical magnetic uh, standard uh, items like you see here, you know, visuals that are very easy to, uh, to recognize. Uh, they may appear as uh, perhaps simplistic in terms of design. Uh, they're not meant to be a piece of, you know, museum uh, modern art, but uh, to be understandable by anyone, regardless of their education, uh, educational achievements, or even language, right? Whatever, the, the, whoever the person is, anyone can understand these and can understand the color codes. Uh, so this is the reason why I'm presenting this is because it's important as a uh, kind of a benchmark for what should happen in the digital world. And this is the spirit that we brought to uh, also the CESA hub, making sure that you're not ending up with a solution that uh, really is made for only the uh, college graduates who have been in an engineering degree to understand. And they think that it's, uh, it's cool and modern, but it really cannot be used to, to bring your entire team together around a common vision. Um, and uh, so that uh, uh, really helps you to make sure that everybody's involved in measurement, sharing information and uh, implementation of corrective actions. Uh, the, there, there is a standard process that we apply, uh, which really starts from the operators, moves up to our work cells, departments and plants. Uh, all of them really organized with processes to serve the customers and uh, in a way that enables the top management to drive the strategy uh, from the strategic to the tactical and operational level and also to monitor, but in a way where really operators are engaged and they actually contribute, they, they can feel that they're contributing to the strategy as well, to the feedback to the top management by providing data, both in real time and, and non-real time. Uh, and by providing good visual best practices, uh, both digital and you see here, both traditional or digital, uh, you enable, you empower uh, all levels of the company to do this from the hourly tracking, whether it's physical or digital, to the uh, daily as well as weekly and monthly so, uh, items. You can find solutions, uh, for example, from vendors like us, to uh, support that communication, whether physical or digital. Uh, and that really applies to the entire organization uh, from the front desk, uh, both for uh, as soon as the uh, staff members, the team members uh, come into the plant uh, to uh, each of the departments with information points, magnetic whiteboards, communication spend, and even at the level of the workbenches. It's not just for the, meet for the meeting rooms. 
Um, so the so, so something else that is really also I found personally very uh, powerful is to think uh, about how the uh, the visual management supports uh, good management rituals and. Uh, and, and so it's it's really goes way beyond simply the the tool itself of you know relatively simple tool of uh, whiteboard and and document holders that you see here, uh, which in themselves are are useful, um, and uh, as you see here, supporting them or, or supplementing them with uh, with digital screens, uh, it, it really is uh, a, a tool for for creating management rituals. Uh, the, the, these rituals should be structured and effective and as quick as possible, uh, the meetings, you know, that you set up uh, so that uh, they don't become a burden for the team and then people just drop because they feel that they're wasting a lot of time and they, they, the data is not available, it's not understandable. And, um, so the short interval management uh, uh, process um, or methodology or concept uh, really relies on and requires these kinds of uh, best practices in, in visual management. Uh, both, for example, for your top five, we'll, we'll uh, give some examples later, uh, top five minutes, top 15. Um, they really empower your team to hold these quick but very effective, efficient meetings. Uh, so there is a way actually to organize your uh, whiteboards and, and we'll see how that's also translate into your digital boards um, that, uh, that, that you can standardize and most companies we work with end up standardizing their process along with our tools. Uh, so on top, you could imagine presenting your production progress. Then uh, below, you you have a, a level to analyze any gaps and non-quality, and then uh, sharing improvement directions and action plans. Uh, and you could you could see this uh, in every single board wherever you are in your organization, so that you don't end up with a chaotic organization. The content itself can vary some of the KPIs because they don't apply to each uh, department, but the structure on how uh, management uh, happens these, with, these, uh, with these short interval meetings uh, will be a lot more effective if you can train all your managers in the same way. And again, uh, this is an example, uh, again, publicly available. It's not uh, something that we were sharing anything confidential. Uh, from a, a company called ST Microelectronics, uh, where they started implementing this uh, at um, all intervals, uh, um, at all levels, these short interval meetings. Uh, so at the beginning of each shift, a five minute briefing to pass on urgent issues. Then between eight and nine, uh, they hold a 15 minute morning review and with, uh, with the production teams and the support functions. Uh, and then at, uh, during the day, factory managers hold a 30 minute briefing with the manager of all workshops. Uh, so um, this is a uh, system that is supported by whiteboards and uh, they are, uh, there is a person assigned to uh, update these whiteboards. And then there is, I uh, found this interesting quote, the benefits are significant. Teams, and this is a lean project man program manager that's speaking, teams are operational more quickly at the beginning of shifts, priorities are more easily identified. We have also noticed better communication between different business areas. We understand one another better. Overall efficiency is impacted directly. So uh, again, quick recap and illustration of how you can set up this kind of short interval meetings uh, with uh, tools such as those provided by uh, CESA systems and others at the operator level uh, or the machine level for hourly communication. You see these uh, examples of whiteboards. They're all uh, structured in a standardized way. And uh, here you see the digital equivalent, by the way, uh, with uh, a, uh, a tablet. Uh, and, uh, and then at the uh, team level for daily communication, uh, these kinds of boards are very popular, especially actually the uh, four-sided uh, whiteboard that's uh, called Top Info from CESA Systems. And uh, then at the sector level, 
Uh, there are some uh, small meeting areas that are organized along with uh, SQCDPs, for example, and for weekly communication. And then uh, at the uh, plant level also, uh, some meeting spaces that are still on the shop floor. So really where you bring the management where the action is, and that's very important, uh, but uh, still in a, in a kind of a more calm uh, area but that's accessible to everybody and you can you could see here the transparency of the information and uh, also the it's not visible on this side but on if you look on uh, the the other side here you can also include uh, the digital screens so uh, a number of companies uh, these are customers of, uh, of the systems uh, are using these best practices and um, the uh, so, so the fundamental benefits of visual management is really transitioning from a situation where uh, meeting management uh, is uh, like a drain to your team's time and energy. Uh, you don't have awareness of milestones and progress status or not, or you're lacking, uh, you, you, you could have uh, delayed problem identification. Uh, there's no clear awareness of customers' expectations and it's difficult to coordinate among the team members, it's really more like a centralized process. So if the manager is not there, you kind of uh, lose the traction. And uh, the benefits now, if you start implementing processes like the ones we just talked about, is that you end up uh, with a lot of times and energy saved because you can actually accelerate your meetings without actually losing efficiency or effectiveness. It's quite the opposite. You can also, get uh, enable your team to quickly uh, visualize uh, the status of their own activities and other departments uh, and uh, you can uh, also that means you can identify uh, orange flags or red flags uh, quickly you can anticipate problems uh, you can also sp provide specific operational expectations you know you can explain how uh, each uh, operational um, indicator contributes to the overall higher uh, overarching goal of the organization uh, and you can actually empower feel give a, a, a feeling of empowerment for the, the team because they uh, really are um, they're in charge or at least one member of the team is in charge of updating it and uh, and so as you see here, I mean, it's kind of uh, now these days, of course, it's harder to hold these kinds of meetings, but uh, there are also the digital equivalents uh, that we will see. Another important uh, step when you think about your, uh, good, your visual management, and again, all this are prerequisites for good digital or digitalization. So this is the reason why we're spending time on this, because as mentioned earlier, uh, digitalization is an opportunity to revisit your visual management and, and rather than just be a mirror of what's existing, it's an opportunity to improve what's existing. And so uh, you can make happen things that may not have happened yet. Uh, so having uh, good indicators right, is, is important. Uh, we have spoken with companies on a regular basis that actually don't have yet a full view of all the indicators they would like to track uh, digitally. The, 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 be, why? Because on paper, it's just too hard for them to track so many things. They, they have a little forms here and there, but uh, so it's a chance for them to, re, it has been a chance for them to really sit down with their colleagues, with the plant managers and, and the, you know, the, the, the operators and, you know, what kind of indicators could we, could, could we uh, collect how and why and so on. And uh, so here you see some examples of these indicators and you can also color code them, which means that uh, on a whiteboard, for example, you can imagine that each area, each type of indicator will have its own color code and immediately recognizable, as you see here. Uh, these are standardized uh, SQCDP boards uh, uh, provided by CISA systems. Uh, for example, a company like Airbus has standardized all of the whiteboards along with the uh, with, with uh, accessories and uh, whiteboards provided by CISA systems. And they, they are color coded. I'm not, I don't know if this one is with them, but uh, this is a kind of the spirit. And as you see, the visuals are very simple. Uh, in this case, they're not uh, visible here, but they, you, you can see that there are uh, some uh, 
magnetic um, color uh, magnets here on the side that you could use to point uh, to certain numbers. And um, they, uh, they, so they're all organized in the same manner. Uh, regardless of which, where you go in your organization, you will always find uh, a name for the dashboard and a name for the indicators. Uh, then uh, the first level is a quick visualization of the indicators as much as possible with diagrams. And then level two will provide uh, some the specific the performance detail. And then you dig deeper to the action plans. And if you have, if you need more uh, data, you can actually even insert uh, some uh, binders. And um, yeah, and then the actual implementation uh, plans. So uh, that uh, that really covers the best practices, you know, as quickly as possible uh, of uh, visual management. Now we're really getting to the subject of today's webinar and the reason why you are here, which is uh, how do we implement this into the digital world? So uh, the way that we're uh, seeing this is very similar to what you've seen before. Now I think you really get the idea that we uh, try to make sure that uh, the digital uh, tools that are available uh, to you really reflect the best practices of good visual management. Uh, so this is an example of a company uh, client uh, of ours where at, within one factory uh, they have 200 operators uh, and uh, 15 production cells organized in three areas and uh, the way that uh, they're collecting data from the hourly level to the, uh, to, to the daily and weekly and monthly is based on uh, different uh, hardware, uh, as well as uh, features of the software. At the hardware level, you see that each operator or supervisor or production line uh, can have its own tablet, uh, and uh, then you can insert the digital screens at the production cell or the area, uh, different types of screens, uh, and, um, the, and then the larger screens can be for the, uh, for the more like, you know, strategic uh, meetings where you actually need to pull different documents, you may need to pull layouts and so on. And so there are very interesting uh, screens where you can uh, move pictures around, save just like a whiteboard, but where every piece of paper is really kind of a digital uh, screen and you can save them, bring them back, etc. Uh, and all of these connect to uh, CESA Hub, which is the software we'll, uh, we'll show you as an example. So, um, this, uh, this also, just to reiterate, uh, supports the uh, short interval meetings that we were talking about before. Uh, we can, uh, you can have uh, data entered hourly so that the next day, uh, immediately when you start your top five meeting, you have already all the data ready to go. And you don't have to spend, you know, an hour or two or who knows, you know, collecting the data on paper and then uh, and, and, and uh, aggregating it and, and so on. Uh, so the same is true for the uh, higher level here at the department level. All the data uh, that is contributed by the operators and the work cells can be uh, accumulated in a uh, SQCDP board. Uh, and fed by the, the, the levels below so that when you hold your daily top 15 meeting, uh, you already have all the data and that shows uh, the, the data contributed by each work cell and operator. And same is true for the uh, monthly uh, or, you know, some companies will have the, the, the top 30 day, actually daily meeting as well. Um, but uh, so this is uh, the way that it works. Sorry, I just see that it's uh, yeah, happening again. Uh, the, so all that is supported by a software that's installed. It's called CESA Hub, but it's, a, it's not a piece of hardware. It's a software that's uh, SQL based and uh, uh, installed on your own server. Uh, it's uh, regardless of the, the server, 
it's installed in a couple of hours and doesn't require much configuration. Uh, and uh, so all this data can be pulled from anywhere in, within your organization and you know, potentially remotely if you are working remotely or are sitting in a different plant or location. So that hub um, actually has a number of features uh, which uh, include dashboards, uh, ta task management, uh, specifically organized as a PDCA, uh, document management, training management. Uh, another important feature, actually a very important feature is the slideshows, which uh, enables you to share uh, in real time some uh, updates as well as company information and so on. Uh, a wall board for, uh, to pr present some priority information and also a management of your Gemba walks uh, with uh, note taking and, uh, and so on. If you want it to be connected with other software, uh, there is also a connector, which uh, enables you to upload the data, both uh, historical data you may have, and you may want to be able to visualize through this type of interface, uh, as well as on a daily basis, uh, so that you can feed uh, within this uh, central dashboard, which is a much more visual uh, data that's coming from indicators that may be coming from other systems or uh, the opposite as well. You can export the data into other systems. So uh, the, the, the dashboard looks like this. Uh, it just, it's completely customizable to your needs. Uh, so in this case, we have an example with SQCD, uh, but uh, depending on the themes that you uh, care, that you, you wanna monitor for your KPIs, uh, it can be part of the setup uh, changed. And then the, you see here in the examples of indicators and the color, they are color coded. So you know when, what days you're hitting your targets in, uh, for which indicators. And uh, you'll see that you can also look at your statistics uh, for each of them. Uh, and uh, well, before that, you can actually see here, you can visualize them. So you, you hit on a little button and it shows you the, uh, the, the same information, but in an even more visual way or differently visual way. And then uh, if you click on the statistics, you'll see uh, the trend, uh, both monthly and daily within the current month. If you click on PDCA, then you'll have a list of the problems that you have identified, you or any team member, and uh, you can uh, assign them to people, you can uh, use them during meetings or uh, you know, within, at any level in your organization, the users can contribute problems and propose solutions, assign them, circulate them, uh, and you can use them as a way to track to make sure nothing is falling through the cracks. And uh, they are color coded so that they're easier to track the status of each and uh, you can uh, also, well, we'll see how we, you can use them as well a bit later. Uh, so uh, this is what we were referring to earlier where uh, with the digital visual management, you can uh, reveal uh, gaps and undetected issues that would, at least that would go undetected in a, uh, perhaps in a, in a system that, that wouldn't have these kinds of visuals. So, um, the structure is very similar to what we saw before, uh, meaning that you start with a way to locate at any point in time, you know where you are, you know what uh, topic or theme you're dealing with. Uh, you have titles for the dashboards, for the indicators. Uh, you have a uh, very quick visual uh, view of your business, uh, as you see here, you know, this is uh, the in implementation of the, the spirit of an image is uh, worth a thousand words. Like right away, you can see uh, how your month has been, uh, how today is looking. And very quickly, you can flip and see it even more clearly with uh, another type of diagram. Uh, and uh, you have more detailed visualization at this level where uh, you have the indicators here. So if you click on any of these, then you'll have the, the more specific visualization of your KPIs. And finally, uh, this is where you act on these KPIs uh, by either uh, looking at more specific trends with the statistics that I showed earlier or the PDCA uh, enabler. And um, so 
the benefits of taking these kinds of uh, tools to the digital world is that you can actually implement digitalized or digital short interval management now. And you see here an example of a customer who's using the uh, SQCD uh, board uh, for uh, just uh, like in this case, I believe it's a touch screen. Uh, and um, you can so quickly get updates in real time. Uh, they're going to be uh, consistent across all digital boards. Uh, you can highlight information in different ways. Uh, you can immediately prompt in communication at any hierarchical level, meaning uh, the PDCA that I showed before. Uh, depending on how you set it up, you can have anyone within the organization immediately communicate in or assign a task to someone else. There is no silos and so on. Of course, you can set up the way that you want to um, structure this. There's an architecture that can be set up uh, uh, so that you can also limit and decide what are the communication uh, channels. Uh, it's interactive uh, and uh, it's very simple to update. Uh, and uh, finally, it enables also remote work, especially these days, it's, uh, it can be useful. Uh, you can, as long as you have access to your company server uh, and you're working anywhere in any other site or from home, uh, within your really staying within your own company server. The data, by the way, is not hosted uh, by SIS systems. You are owner of your data, contrary to some SaaS systems where you may not be really uh, owner of it, and then you end up uh, kind of locked in uh, with very difficult uh, process to, to get your data out. And um, the, so, so here we're getting a bit more in the, as a illustration of your daily uh, CESA hub day, right? Um, in the morning, you record all the activities uh, through the CESA hub, well, actually they're already ready for you because they've been uh, uploaded the day before. Uh, you're immediately ready to hold your top five meeting by looking at the data from the prior day. Uh, then you also have the data with your available for the manager meeting. Uh, and uh, you can also have, if you've taken some decisions or input from your team uh, during your top five, you can enter it directly in your PDCA, for example. And that way you have it available for your manager meeting. Uh, you can spend time during the day using that same PDCA and dashboard to uh, resolve issues, uh, enter your status on some tasks, assign tasks, request updates about tasks. And then uh, you can also escalate issues directly through that same system. Uh, these are some examples of the, uh, of the devices available uh, to uh, hold uh, uh, the digital screens. Uh, there are accessories that enable uh, your operators to carry a tablet or to, have to, to, to hold a tablet on their workstations and make sure they're not going to drop or, or, or be uh, you know, misplaced. Uh, that can be attached to the workbench. So the goal, additional goal is, of course, reaching zero paper which has in many benefits. Uh, and um, for uh, the, uh, so I mentioned earlier, uh, the ability to create slideshows uh, through the data that's in, uh, in the in CESA Hub, you can configure uh, slideshows that will include uh, data that comes from the KPIs you are tracking. And as you see, they can be uh, very visual uh, very quick to understand, again, same spirit, anyone within the organization, whatever their education or learning style or you know, propensity to understand uh, even uh, language and so on barriers, uh, will be able to understand these types of data, uh, which is uh, really important for inclusivity as well. And um, the uh, so, and you can insert additional slides that can be uh, for awareness building, for team development, and so on. Uh, so, uh, the, the way that uh, it works is uh, very straightforward. Uh, we can, we will show you on the demo. Uh, and you see here are so many examples of these kinds of slides. Uh, and uh, then you can also integrate them in your meeting rooms, your offices, your training rooms. Uh, as you see here, once again, the same uh, same type of, uh, of inclusion. 
And, uh, and as far as the meeting rooms are concerned, uh, there are now digital meeting rooms that can be uh, also uh, equipped by the systems that include uh, a variety of features, including uh, the option to have webcams so that you can hold meetings with remote teams uh, as if you were working in the same room. And uh, you can even share uh, the digital, you know, the SQCDPs, for example, they'll, they'll be seeing them on, in real time. If they have also access to them, you can be discussing exactly the same screen. Um, and there are also uh, some, uh, uh, some, some uh, screens that can be uh, digital and uh, touch screens uh, where you can be working on exactly the same screen with people who are remote. Uh, well, this concludes uh, pretty much the uh, general presentation and uh, we will have a demo uh, in a minute, but uh, there, is a, um, there is a question that uh, I think many of you might be thinking about is how do we integrate all this? It's, uh, it might appear overwhelming. Uh, I know that we have uh, installed CESA Hub in some companies that uh, don't have yet a fully mature uh, lean um, visual management uh, process. And uh, so in their case, they were looking at uh, starting with uh, an inc very incremental introduction, uh, supporting and, and, and uh, supplementing their process but very incrementally, uh, other companies may have uh, much uh, more uh, mature uh, visual management and are looking to go to the next step uh, with, uh, with, with uh, digital solutions. But let me stop here and, um, and actually invite Hector to share with us his thoughts uh, because I've, I found it very, uh, very well uh, thought, uh, and uh, if that's okay, actor, may I share the, uh, the 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 slide that you have pre pre presented that you have prepared? Sure, please uh, go ahead, uh, Jabrin. Okay, great. You you'll see that it's a great illustration of what is some of the images that you see here, where you know you have this combination of of of, uh, of um, digital and and uh, and physical and. But, but before you get there, so the, there's a, there are many questions that uh, Hector has been thinking about. So uh, sorry, I wasn't able to make your uh, slide uh, more visible, but hopefully everybody can read. Um, so I'll let, I'll let you walk us through this. Yeah, no, thank you, Jabril. So you, you have done an amazing job, uh, Jabril, uh, showing the, the, the what, uh, the why, and how visual management helps uh, companies uh, improve their, their bottom line. So, you know, if we, if we think about visual management, uh, uh, visual management in combination with uh, uh, leaders' standard work uh, represent uh, the backbone of the lean culture, of the continuous improvement culture, right? So having said that, uh, so, you know, if we actually think about lean, uh, we actually implement lean to improve the or organizational cap capability the, the people's capabilities to solve problems, right? So lean visual management actually, actually helps, us, helps us with that. Eh? So for example, like if, if you start from that principle, then you can say the first question that you may wanna ask yourself when building a, a visual management or visual control is uh, why do we need the visual? What is the purpose? Um, what are the problem, problems that we're trying to solve with the visual, right? So one, once the team, start thinking about those problems, what you will find is that uh, uh, you will have um, other questions such as, uh, do we need to improve the collaboration uh, around certain issues? Uh, do we need to understand the specific pro problems uh, that we have uh, uh, production or safety or quality? And then the team actually working together will start thinking about, you know, what is the vision that we have uh, for the business? What is the vision that we have uh, so that we can actually, as a team, we can start working uh, together towards that vision. And um, then the, the visual also needs to start showing the current condition. What is the current condition? Where, where are we at uh, in this particular issue, right? Uh, so once you actually know what the current condition is, then the next uh, question that you wanna uh, start asking yourself is, uh, what is the target 
or what is the future condition that we are actually trying to uh, achieve. So that is part of the visual, knowing what that target is, then, then the, the team is gonna start tracking that uh, target. Eh? Uh, the next question that, that you wanna start thinking about is, uh, you know, who needs to review the visual, right? So, so what are, who are the key uh, players uh, or the team members that will support the, the problem, problems resolution by, by assisting uh, in the engagement or in the visual engagement? Um, you know, so then you have another opportunity there is that you can actually start thinking about, you know, do we have an opportunity to align other teams, uh, other teams that are not uh, uh, in the in the room that would actually support us. Uh, so following up on what Jabril was saying that, you know, CISA systems uh, uh, will provide some digital capabilities and that's where you can start thinking, you know, do we have an opportunity to integrate this uh, particular meeting, visual meeting with another uh, site, another remote site? So that's something that you may wanna think about uh, using a, a, a digital capability to integrate multiple teams. Eh? And Jabril explained quite well the, the benefits of uh, using digital uh, visuals. Eh? So the, the, the next set of questions that you wanna start thinking about uh, is that, uh, you know, when it comes to the actual, what, what data do we need to visualize? Eh? So when you start thinking about the, the issues that you wanna resolve, uh, the, uh, obviously the, the questions are gonna be, what data is available to us? Uh, what data do we need to actually start uh, digitalizing? And that's another opportunity for digital visuals. When you actually start thinking about what data you have and what data you don't have, you will actually uh, be surprised that people will start thinking about how you can actually digitalize uh, some of the data so that they can improve the, the, the process of uh, populating the data by introducing uh, you know, digital uh, uh, capabilities. Eh? So the, the other aspect that you wanna start thinking about is uh, when and how often do you wanna actually review the visuals? Eh? And that's actually combined with uh, something we call the lean standard work or the leaders standard work. So, as uh, Jabril mentioned, you know, in some uh, sites or, or manufacturing sites, uh, people actually have uh, meetings that are like five, uh, 15 minutes uh, meetings. Uh, and, and, and this standard work is the, you know, one of the key elements of the lean culture. When people actually make a, a habit of uh, looking at the visual together and where they can actually solve the problems together by looking at uh, what is the current condition versus the target and what are the items that we actually need to focus on so that in the long term, we can actually materialize uh, that vision. Eh? So, you know, what you will find then is that uh, once the team is engaged, uh, the, no, the team is actually participating in the design of the visual. The team is actually participating in the sol solution, resolution of the issues. And the team will actually make that uh, visual sustainable because now they own it. They own the issues, they own the visuals. So imagine that the capability that you're building now with the team engaged in a way that now they are excited to see the issues and to resolve the issues in a way that they actually know that they are making progress in the business. So that's basically the questions that I wanted to highlight so that when you are setting up your visuals or when you are improving your visuals, you think about those questions and you actually start considering the opportunity of digital visuals. Eh? You know, thank you, uh, Jabril. So I think that this is, you know, that this is uh, what I wanted to highlight, uh, uh, Jabril. This is excellent. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thinking this, and uh, you know, you've uh, clearly put a lot of thought in uh, in this uh, diagram and uh, using a visualization tool that itself is a. Uh, you, you're applying to the thinking process, the visual uh, principles as well. It's very, very clear uh, on the, you know, a way to recap the, uh, for lean visual management, the, the what, the when, the how, the why, and the, the who. Um, and um, so thank you. Yeah, it's an excellent, uh, excellent uh, recap and um, kind of overview of the, the thinking process and the way that we should approach uh, visual management and digitalization of, of KPI uh, visual management. So 
Well, thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome, uh, Jabri. I'm glad that I was able to uh, highlight uh, or provide some uh, support on this uh, on this front. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, and I'm sure that uh, some of our listeners may also, I mean, will, will want to have a conversation. So, uh, if you, uh, if any of you is interested, uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, facilitate an introduction with uh, Hector and, uh, and and share the uh, his contact information. Um, so. Um, the uh, so, so to, to recap uh, in terms of uh, what really like as you see there's a, there are a lot of questions and thinking that uh, that needs to happen and it's an opportunity really to to think about all those um, and we we're happy to help through that entire process uh, from the need analysis uh, assisting in analyzing and assessing the current situation uh, and understanding the needs. Uh, then transforming that into specifications, mapping out your organization, the system structure, the project architecture. Uh, so the benefit, by the way, I don't mean to make it sound uh, complex. Um, to give you a sense, uh, this is a hub, again, can be installed in, in two, three hours and uh, requires a very minimum uh, integration of uh, anything. It's just a piece of software installed. Uh, and um, it's uh, it's already preset in a sense. We 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 set it up for you. Uh, and that happens in a half day. Uh, there's a half day or a day of training over a few sessions, and uh, and, and so even within one hour, you're able to start using it. So I know why we've spoken with. Uh, uh, a company that actually is working towards the ability to collect this kind of data and uh, uh, they I was surprised they said it's a two-year project uh, so uh, it's it's very different um, in terms of uh, of the time to deploy uh, but in any case you know there's definitely uh, an opportunity to complete and uh, to spend more time on the need analysis for the reasons that we talked about before and Hector uh, very uh, nicely represented and then um, making sure that you map out the system, the structure, what KPIs you need to collect, etc. Then we define the dashboard, what you would like to see on your dashboards, like uh, I showed you examples with SQCDP, what is it that you wish to have, what kind of indicators you wish in what part of uh, themes they are, and uh, an implementation plan, which again, I mean to make it sound uh, bigger than it actually is, but still, um, that includes, uh, you know, some of the next steps that we'll see. Uh, the testing phase uh, and adjusting potentially and uh, assisting with uh, releasing it for production use, uh, making sure that we help with uh, the deployment and training the, your users if needed, we can help with that. And uh, then being there in case there is anything uh, for uh, assistance. So uh, to, to recap, you know, some of the benefits are uh, speed um, and uh, in terms of, you know, very quickly, you can start optimizing and collecting data. Uh, it helps you very quickly achieve better productivity, eliminate unnecessary tasks such as, co you know, collecting data on paper and so on. Uh, it's very simple. There's uh, literally no installation on your end to do. We, uh, we, we do it for, for you. It can be installed remotely. Um, and uh, you own it, by the way. Uh, it's installed in your, on your uh, server. There is no uh, outside connection that, uh, other than at the moment of, uh, of installation and, and uh, maintenance as needed. Uh, it also creates traceability. You see actually who entered data, which is not necessarily feasible on paper, uh, who entered data, when, uh, and so on. And, um, and there is assistance provided. So um, we actually gathered a study uh, or some diff different studies that talk about uh, the uh, importance for manufacturers to digitalize their data collection. Uh, right now, three fourths of manufacturers collect data manually still, most of the data, and that, whereas three fourths actually want to digitalize that data collection, but they are not, at least uh, much slower than uh, they would like. And the reason is that there are barriers. 
uh, complex IT upgrades. Uh, most software uh, requires um, much more uh, IT uh, deployment than uh, the one we, we were showing. Uh, also, it requires time, either from the internal IT team, which is usually stretched thin, or bringing in external resources, which are expensive. Uh, I know uh, a company that actually sells uh, software that requires two to three times the cost of the license, and these are hidden costs because as you need to make more requirements, they keep piling up. And, um, and, and then also uh, it's difficult to integrate different, you know, fragmented sources. So you already have a lot of different uh, uh, the silos and software, and uh, it's, it may appear as really complex to, to organize them. Uh, whereas uh, the benefit of a platform uh, like the one we've designed, it was exactly to help uh, address these barriers. Um, there, there's no uh, IT upgrades. It runs with Microsoft. Uh, it's uh, very little IT time. We're talking about hours and uh, it can be self-standing. It doesn't have to be functioning with other or it can sync with others and you can pull data in and out as needed as well. Um, so that takes us to the illustration for those who would like to see an example. Uh, well, uh, we have our, uh, one of our colleagues who's going to show the uh, demo right now. We'll be running it and um, then we'll um, take it from there. Okay, um, so this is our SESA hub software. This is our nimble KPI management tool. Um, it's used to manage the company indicators and uh, it provides a dashboard that's connected to all company screens, works using an SQL server and can be launched directly through your web browser. So there's no need for any heavy installation, anything like that. Um, and the data that, can, that is collected can be accessed by everyone um, in, in the software itself. So. Here we have the actual main uh, dashboard of SESA Hub. Um, this is what you would see on the home screen uh, with all with the five different modules that we provide. Um, so up here we have what is essentially the organization of the facility. So up here uh, where you see site one or sites would be uh, the main users of the software, the management or the operators or the um, the manager of that specific department. Um, the sectors would be the different facilities that we have uh, or that the organization has or whoever has. And, uh, and these can also be updated with pictures. Um, so as we can see here, so we have one individual here in this specific facility uh, named Bill Smith. And uh, if needed, there can be a picture uploaded as well for Bill Smith uh, for that specific facility. And as we keep going down further, um, these are islands, uh, what can be referred to as essentially the production lines. And again, we see here the individual working there and, uh, and, can, and the little description can be added with the picture as well. Um, and then down here, you, you would see the operators. Essentially. So, so th this provides uh, the organization of and th this can be completely customized again to really uh, reflect exactly what's going on in the organization. So it doesn't have to say sectors or islands or sites, right? It could say uh, really anything that you would like, as, as mentioned before, production lines, operators, anything like that. Um, and it's really meant to, to have a, a, a real quick overview of the organization, what's happening, who's working there, et cetera. So as we move away from this, um, I'll introduce the first module, which is going to be our dashboard module. Um, so this is really accessible by the operator and the manager as well. Really, anybody who's going to be inputting the information into the software for uh, the data management. So, um, so multiple dashboards can be created. So this is just the template one that we use uh, to just show. Uh, what what SESA Hub is capable of. So we have our SQCDP themes uh, here, but again, these, these are customizable completely to what the, the organization is using 
um, can be changed completely uh, and tailored personally. So uh, again, these are just uh, for templates and for examples. And as we see here, our first theme, which is uh, security. And then what you are looking at below is essentially uh, a calendar to demonstrate all 30 days of the month. Um, and then they're color coded depending on what, what happened on that specific day, uh, if the threshold was hit by that certain KPI. And then, and then as we move down to two, this is where the KPI would be, right? So here for, for the first one, for the first theme, the security, the KPI is accidents. Um, and then here, as we can see by the color coding, um, depending on which day it says no accident, without stop, with stop, with and without stop. So completely customizable to what you would like. Um, if we take a look here for the quality theme, uh, we have again, the, the calendar and our KPI here is number of anomalies. Um, and then these can be color coded and adjusted as we can see here, um, depending on what happened uh, during the day. So um, they, these can also be uh, flipped over and uh, analyzed like through, through, a, through a graph. So I uh, sometimes it's, it's more visually appealing for organizations to show their uh, should show the information like this instead of kind of going through every day manually. Um, and then uh, they, they can be all flipped and uh, reflipped. So if we take a look down here and we move over to the stats page. So this will provide um, an additional way to show the information in each theme. So as you can see here, uh, this is for the security theme, and uh, these are all of the, the, the data and statistics that have been inputted and uh, color-coded depending on what threshold is set. And, um, and then from here, you can check any theme and kind of see what was going on here. Um, and this is also uh, another way to like broadcast the data uh, throughout the organization. Um, so if we go back, and then so here we have our PDCA uh, action plan. So directly from, from the dashboard, uh, we can actually create a PDCA um, to, to kind of resolve anything on the spot, what's going on. Um, and I'll demonstrate that here. Um, so if we create a PDCA for the safety, um, we'll see here uh, the problem, the proposed solution and the mean. Um, so here I can identify what the severity of the problem is. Um, and for example, I have a problem mentioning um, operators are falling down, right? That, that would be so, an example safety issue. Um, and then that would be a very, very urgent kind of uh, issue going on in the organization. Um, the proposed solution would be um, to put up more safety safety signage, right? And that would uh, perhaps help operators from falling down, from getting themselves into situations that they don't need to. And the means is kind of how um, the organization or, or whoever is gonna go about this, whoever uh, is in charge of this action plan. Um, and that would be in a sense, um, look into signage vendors, for example. And then on the right here, we can schedule a start date. So for instance, we'll schedule it for today. And since it's a very urgent problem, we'll schedule it for today. And then the schedule end date um, we'll have for the 28th, let's say, for example. And then right below, we can see who the action plan was made by, uh, who needs to verify that it's being done, and who's approving that each step is, is kind of being followed through. Um, and then after that, we can uh, save this. And after it's saved, it will populate uh, as a PDCA, as a new action plan. Um, and then as you can see here, it'll tell us the status. So here we're still at the plan phase um, and then we'll move to the do and then the check. Um, and then what, when it was created by, who, and again mentioned who made, who made it, who needs to be verifying, who it needs to be approved by. Um, and these can be, um, made for really any indicator. And then these can all be checked also in uh, the task module that I'll go into a further bit later. Um, but I believe that covers really um, what, what's kind of going on here, um, unless I'm mistaken. 
Um, the last thing I want to cover was inputting uh, inputting the information into, uh, and I believe that's here, yeah. Okay, so inputting the information into SESA Hub, actually, so this is uh, where the operator or the manager or anybody who, who has a license to the software will be uh, inputting the, the data from whatever it is that needs to be managed. So uh, up here we have our threshold display, which is completely configurable um, depending on what is being measured, uh, depending on what unit you, the organization wants and, and what threshold uh, would be set. And then as we can see here, um, this is really representing the, the year and uh, all of these uh, are days, essentially all the days of the year. And in, in each one can be reported a value, uh, which uh, will either stay within the threshold or be out of the threshold. And depending on what input is, uh, what value is inputted, then um, the color code will be adjusted automatically. Um, and now, as you can see here on the right, it's, it's mentioning it's the, today is the 22nd. So, um, so for instance, uh, click the, the 22nd, and it'll take us here uh, to this page where we can essentially record the value um, and the result, and kind of see what what's going on that specific day. What was the max threshold? What was the min um, and the average? And uh, these can be inputted for uh, every day individually and automatically updated, as I mentioned. Um, let me go back. So yeah, that that's that's really um, that's really for for most of the the dashboard capabilities in regards to uh, inputting the data, the color schemes, uh, the different themes that can be adjusted, the KPIs that can be adjusted, um, and the PDCA plan that, that we can create from here. Um, so if we go back to our home page and we, and we take a look back at our modules, we'll see the tasks. So the tasks is, as I mentioned before, this is where um, you'll be able to see all of the PDCA action plans that were created, um, sort them by when they need to be started by, made by, uh, approved by whoever. And then that we do have filters up here, um, depending on if, if, if there are many of them to get uh, more meticulous. So if we go back to the homepage, uh, so that'll be our second module, the task module. Then we have our documents module. So this really just acts as more of an internal cloud so uh, all of the information that is going to be stored on CESA Hub is going to be your information or the organization's information. It's not that we're taking a hold of it or we have uh, or we're uh, taking or like buying it or whatever. Um, it's owned by the organization. It's going to be stored on the, the main server that's being used there. Um, so we don't have any jurisdiction over it. But um, th this is really an, an internal cloud where any documents can be uploaded and shared um, and can be accessed. We'll go back to our main page. Um, next, we have our slideshows module. So from here, uh, we would be able to create a slideshow that can be broadcasted throughout the entire organization. Um, it can really be uh, any pictures that you'd like in there, maybe some KPIs. Um, as you can see here, this is just an example of some, some template pictures that we offer. But again, the, these can be, it can be added uh, wh whichever and how long and uh, how many. So completely customizable for the organization. And lastly, we do have training. Um, so the training is uh, really a really great tool for organizations to have for their new employees that they're still training, that they would like to get, kind of get their hands on this methodology. Um, and as we can see here, these are just uh, like templatized uh, for, for us to have, but, but these can be updated for whichever, wh whatever the organization is looking for. Um, so any, any training can be uploaded here and shared uh, within the organization. And anybody who has access to Save the Hub will be able to see this training. Um, 
And uh, I believe that's it. Um, in regards to all the main modules. Um, stop me if I'm wrong. Great. Yes, you covered uh, all of them. Excellent. So, so um, now that you've seen the demo, uh, let's talk about uh, next steps. Uh, for anyone interested in uh, testing this, uh, we're happy to discuss a complementary proof of concept where you can share with us the indicators that you'd like to test or uh, we're happy to arrange a conversation uh, to uh, really think uh, even upstream from that, you know, what is, uh, uh, well, I guess the, the, the what, why, how, who, and so on that uh, Hector was uh, mentioning. And uh, I'd be, again, very happy to facilitate a conversation uh, to, to help you uh, go in the direction of uh, better visual management and uh, really sound uh, digital KPI uh, management. So um, the as a next step, you know, please feel free to send uh, your questions to us. Happy to hold a individual Q and A. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, you'll find also a variety of catalogs on uh, our website, CESA systems, cesa-systems.us. Uh, ranging from uh, the Lean Office uh, uh, to um, a variety of uh, training games, uh, and we call it Lean Dynamic. It's all the floor racks and uh, trolleys and Kanban systems, uh, uh, as well as a, a specific catalog for Industry 4.0, uh, all the digital solutions, as well as uh, a white paper on ergonomics, plus our main catalog. Uh, so, uh, I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. And in the meantime, thank you for your attention. Thanks again, Hector, so much for being with us. Bye-bye.